Hi guys, I'm Andres Montero and today I'm going to demonstrate Dorico's capabilities to score a film. This is not a tutorial, but more an example of how Dorico would behave writing a four minute action cue with full orchestra. I've broken down this video into two parts. I'll talk about Finale and Sibelius in the first part and why I haven't been able to write a picture with these two softwares. In the second part, I will show you how I wrote a cue using Dorico. I've been a Finale and Sibelius user for many years for composition and orchestration and with the release of Dorico in October of 2016, I was looking forward to testing the capabilities of writing an orchestral score for a film with good playback capabilities, something that the two big notation software had not been able to manage with reliable results. Since the release of Finale version 25, they got rid of the video window and implemented rewire support where you could host a video with a third-party software, including Digital Performer, Pro Tools, or Logic. Writing a film score this way, it's obsolete, and you will have to do multiple steps while writing a cue to keep Finale and your DAW in sync every time. It's just not efficient. Also, the playback in Finale is not good compared to its competitors. Built-in sounds are not great, and if you have a large score, the balance of dynamics are not good, and sometimes it doesn't play back all the notes, even if you have a powerful computer. Garitan is better, but again, the quality is inferior to other options on the market. Sibelius has most of the elements needed to achieve right into picture. You can work with a video inside the program and can insert markers attached to its timecode. The built-in sounds are not great, but in my opinion, compared to Finale, the balance is better and it will not drop out any sounds if you have a 2D section. An excellent option using third-party sounds with Sibelius is Node Performer. This is a sample library made for notation software, and it works flawlessly in Sibelius and the integration with the playback dictionary is fantastic. It's a plug and play kind of thing. No need to route any sounds, no need to balance anything with the mixer. The response to the dynamics are really good and you can have a decent demo out of your score without spending too much time making a mock-up on your DAW using high-end sample libraries. The only flaw that discourages me from writing for a film in Sibelius while using Node Performer is the one second delay that Node Performer uses to predict dynamics and articulations to achieve its playback capabilities. Even if you offset your video for one second, the video will not stay fully in sync with your score. You can use Node Performer with Finale, but it has too many bugs and is not efficient at all. Then Dorico came out, and as a notation software, it wants to do the same thing that Finale and Sibelius have been doing for years. However, what makes it special is the implementation of a feature that none of the other programs have, a play module that allows you to modify MIDI information without ruining your notation on the score. Basically two in one, a sequencer and a notation software. Taking advantage of the Spitfire competition to write an action scene from HBO's Westworld, I decided to give it a try and write for film in Dorico. In the setup mode, you can right click the flow that you want to attach the video to. It is straightforward and it analyzes the frame rate you can modify the timecode start to be fully in sync. The feature that I loved was the flow attachment position. You can tell the program where exactly you would like to start the video in your flow. I wanted to start my music at bar three. 
my cue starts in 4-4, so I put 8 bits and selected the quarter note as my bit unit. I have to say that I had some issues loading the video in the beginning. It didn't recognize it and I had to quit and restart the program a couple of times until it worked. To this day, I have no idea what the problem was. I wrote some material without having the video in sync just to create an identity to the scene. Having themes will give consistency to your score and to any scene in a film. For this, I wrote my themes in a second flow, which is an independent piece of music within the same file. Another feature that the other programs don't have. Another good feature in Dorico is the layouts. Here is where you set up your parts and you can also create custom layouts. For example, I created a layout to see only the sketch or the sketch plus strings and other custom layouts to work more efficiently and quickly get to the parts I wanted to see on the screen. Sibelius and Finale have similar ways to do this, but this feature in Dorico is way more stable and efficient. Once I wrote my themes, I went and added markers to start laying out my cue. The markers are attached to the time code, and there is even a feature called Fine Tempo, where you can select which hits are important and Dorico will give you suggestions of tempos that will fit your scene. You can select any of the suggestions and see how many frames you are off from your hit points. To put tempos in, you can use the popover to enter any tempo in your score, but also you can use the play mode and draw tempo changes and alterations like you do in your sequencer. Definitely a handy feature for writing to film and something that none of the other notation programs have. When you change tempos in the play mode, they will show as signposts in the score and you can decide if you want to show them or not. Once I had my layout set up and my sketch, I started orchestrating and fitting my themes into the scene. It is always hard to switch to a new software, especially if you know all the workarounds in your preferred program. Working for so many years in Finale and Sibelius, I know how to work fast and efficiently in those programs, but I'm still learning how to enhance my workflow in Dorico. But I have to say that if you are a Sibelius user, using Dorico will feel somehow familiar. However, while writing my score, I definitely discover some obstacles. The way Dorico handles ties is very different and it can be a pain in the butt to enter dynamics where you have tied nodes. For example, if you want to enter a hairpin in the middle of a tied node, the program won't do it. You either have to enter the dynamic somewhere else and then move it or you have to break all the ties, enter your dynamics, then create the ties again. Another obstacle that I noticed is that Dorico does not allow you to select a bar if it contains a tied node. For example, in bar 16, if I want to delete the whole node, I am not able to select the bar. I either need to break the tie or select the previous node in bar 15 that it is tied to and change the duration. Another example of a problem with ties is in bar 3. If I change my mind and decide that I want the violin 1 to start playing at bar 4 instead of bar 3, when I select bar 3, all the tight nodes up through bar 6 become selected, so any change I make to bar 3 will affect everything. So again, here I will have to break the ties before I can make a change at bar 3 and then put the ties back in. Another challenging thing to do is to change or insert time signatures in the middle of the score without affecting the music after the time signature change. For example, in a real situation, you may have a finished cue and then the director reviews the film and changes the scene by adding or cutting a few seconds. 
you could fix your queue by removing or adding some bits. Let's say in bar 16, I would like to change this 4-4 to a 3-4. In other programs, I can select the bar and change the time signature for that bar only. If I do the same in Dorico, it changes the time signature from bar 16 until the end, resulting in a catastrophe. The workaround is to select bar 17, put a time signature, in this case 4-4, then change the time signature in bar 16 to 3-4. This way, you can preserve the time signatures from bar 16 on. However, when you do this, Dorico creates an irregular bar with the extra notes from bar 16 without even showing a time signature for that bar, which in this case would be a 1-4 bar. Now, you need to fix this by deleting that irregular bar. If you forget to do that, you're in trouble. Now, if I need to add a beat to the queue, we run into problems as well. If I decide I want to change bar 16 from 4-4 to 5-4, you would think I could do the same workaround as I showed in the previous example by adding a 4-4 time signature to bar 17 and then changing bar 16 to 5-4. Unfortunately, this doesn't work at all. Even though a 5-4 time signature appears, the bar is still in 4-4 and I cannot add any beats even if I delete the notes and re-enter them. So instead, I discovered that I needed to add an empty bar after bar 16 and then change bar 16 to 5-4. This way, Dorico will have 5 beats available in a 5-4 time signature. And then, you still need to make sure that you delete the empty measure with the irregular time signature. No matter how you do this, Dorico is definitely not handling time signatures very well. If you write everything in one time signature, then you won't have any problems, but in film scoring, that will not be the case. Overall, Dorico did a good job, and the features to write for film are great having the video in sync with the time code, the ability to put markers and having the play mode are definitely big steps in creating new ways to use a notation software. In terms of efficiency, some of the functions are slow and in this industry you need to be able to work quickly without software slowing you down. There is a lot of room for improvement, but this is a great start for a software like Dorico. Finale and Sibelius are still great programs for creating scores and I use them on a daily basis, but Dorico is offering some exciting elements for writing music to film. As I mentioned earlier, I chose to use Dorico to write a cue for the Spitfire scoring competition. The final product that I submitted to the competition included other sample libraries and some fine-tuning programming in Cubase to get a better sound. But for this video, I want to play back the score I wrote in Dorico using Node Performer only as my orchestral sounds. Thanks for watching and enjoy.